The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, the rich man looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now Lazarus is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The rich man said, Then, Father, I beg you to send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. The rich man said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to be here this morning. It's been just delightful. You have a wonderful congregation, and I'm also very grateful to your pastor and to your new ministry and practice student for welcoming me so warmly. Thank you for your support of Gettysburg Seminary, and I certainly hope that you can come and take a tour and worship with us and see a little bit more personally what's going on. So I know I will be very glad to welcome you to Gettysburg Seminary if you decide to come. Life is good. Do you recognize these images? Have you seen these around? Well, seen these around? Yep, yep, all right. Maybe some of you even have a t-shirt or a bumper sticker with this, this Life is Good logo on it. We have a Life is Good store down in Gettysburg. It's just full of all kinds of merchandise. It's right behind Mr. G's ice cream. And my 13-year-old daughter loves to go to Mr. G's and have some ice cream and then go into the Life is Good store and look at all of the fun, brightly colored items for sale. Two brothers, Bert and John Jacobs, started this Life is Good company in 1989, selling t-shirts out of their van in Massachusetts. They grew up in a tiny home with six children, and the Jacobs brothers liked to say, Life isn't easy, life isn't perfect, but life is good. The first step on the path to gratitude is recognizing this truth. Life is good. Life isn't easy, life isn't perfect, but because life comes from God, and is redeemed through Jesus on the cross, life is good. Once we begin to look at our lives through the lens of the good, once we begin to see God at work 
and the redemption of Christ everywhere around us, our lives change. We can embrace a state of gratitude. Life is good, and we are grateful. The New Testament reading today from the end of the first letter to Timothy tells us that we are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous, and ready to share, thus storing up for ourselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that we may take hold of the life that really is life. It's only when we recognize that life is good, even in the rocky times, even in the deep down dark valley times, it is only when we recognize that life is good and we have much for which to be thankful, only then can we follow that advice of St. Paul in this letter. Can we see how this follows? When we recognize that life is good, we become grateful. And when we become grateful, we are moved to be generous. And the more generous we are, the more joyful we become. And then our lives become the inverse of that vicious downward spiral that you sometimes hear about. Our lives become an upward spiral, a victorious loop. The more that we see life is good, the more grateful we become, the more generous we are, which inevitably brings joy. I've never met a sad, generous person. So life becomes better. Gratitude grows and generosity flows. And the victorious loop continues. But what about when life really isn't good? When life is terrible, when illness or tragedy strikes, perhaps not just an individual, but maybe an entire community, when our city or our state or these United States of America, or the world suffers from horrible violence and unrest. Can we truly and simply claim that life is good? Is it possible to make such a claim as life is good while racial tensions rock our country and political disagreements result in hateful aggression? Are we not turning a blind eye to injustice? Is such optimism and hope and focus on the good while so much falls apart just selfish foolishness? Yes and no. Yes, the world is suffering. We are suffering. And others are suffering. And yes, it is our calling as Christians to recognize this suffering and moreover, work to end it. But the cross, the foolishness of the cross, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, the foolishness of the cross erases the possibility that our hope is foolish. Our hope is not foolish. Our optimism, our belief, and our cry that life is good in the midst of the despair is not foolish. Violence and hate is foolish, but the death and resurrection of Jesus shows us the power of hope and love. In the face of all that is broken, we can look right at it and say, life is good, and we are grateful, and we will be generous and joyful. We cannot fix all the broken, 
but we can mend our little corner of the world once we start to see that we have been given what we need to do what needs to be done. Now, in our gospel lesson from Luke, we hear about the rich man in his purple robes, and we hear about poor Lazarus the beggar. I wonder if the rich man thought he was rich, or if he was always looking over his shoulder at the richer man and wondering, why doesn't Lazarus go and ask the richer man for some help? Maybe the rich man didn't understand that he had what he needed to do what needed to be done. The rich man couldn't save the world. The rich man wasn't expected to save the world. But the rich man could help Lazarus. Maybe part of the sin of the rich man was that he received his good things, as Abraham calls them, but did not see that his life was good. Maybe the rich man was so busy thinking of his troubles and of the richer man around the corner or across the street that he just let Lazarus languish there. Life is good because it was created by God. Life is redeemed through the cross of Christ because the cross enables us to see that we do not suffer alone and suffering ultimately ends. We can be grateful for the good and be generous to make the world better and that brings joy the victorious loop, the upward spiral. I have seen this in my own life and can testify to it. Last year, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. The doctor said that I have had it for 17 years, at least. With this diagnosis, as with every diagnosis that we receive in our lives, that we all get, there was a choice. I could choose to see this as a devastating blow, or I could embrace that life is good and be grateful. Not by my own doing, but through the strength of Jesus Christ and the cross, which redeems suffering, I chose to embrace that life is good. And I embarked on a search for deep gratitude. Now, theory and the classroom study of theology and, and preaching from a pulpit, it's all fine, but gratitude? to be worth anything has to be gritty and earthy and real. Gritty public gratitude, a witness to the good in the midst of the struggles, how to live it? I turned to Facebook. Every day since January 1st, I have been publicly posting about gratitude, my gratitude for my good life. My life isn't perfect. My life isn't always easy. But life comes from God and is redeemed through the cross of Christ. And life is good. And I am grateful. And that gratitude for a good life drives me to generosity, to do what I can, the little bit that I can, not to look to the richer man or richer woman or the healthier man or healthier woman, but strengthened through Christ 
to see that life is good and that I am grateful. And Lazarus is waiting by the gate. I am grateful to be here in this place today, sharing the love of Christ with you. Life is good. Amen.